What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're tackling a topic that's become a major issue in the diecast community. We'll break down the differences between scalpers and true collectors, the effect of artificial shortages, and we've got some surprising stats to back it all up. Whether you're just starting out or a longtime collector, this is something you need to know. So let's dive in. All right, first things first, guys. What is the difference between a scalper and a true collector? Well, first off, we hear this term thrown around all the time. I think it's becoming one of those terms that is losing the true definition of it. What did you say? Textbook wise, scalpers are people who rush to buy up rare or desirable diecast cars, not for the love of the hobby, but to flip them for profit. We hear it all the time. We see it on marketplaces. We see it on eBay. There's a lot of selling platforms out there, but whether it's using bots online or clearing store shelves as soon as shipments arrive, they create what we call is artificial shortages by hoarding cars and reselling them at marked up prices. For example, a car that costs $1.19, $1.25 in stores can end up being sold for $20, $50, or even $100 on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, whatnot, because scalpers have created an artificial shortage driving up demand and prices. So a collector, if you're watching this and you're a collector, this should really strike you word for word. But these are individuals who acquire items for personal enjoyment, fulfillment, often with a focus on specific themes or models. They value the history, rarity, and community aspect of their collections. Now jumping into hoarders of collectibles, while similar to collectors, not really, but they kind of are. We are same same. Same same, but different, but still same. Hoarders tend to accumulate items in excess, often without regard for organization or even value. Their collecting can stem from emotional needs rather than a genuine appreciation for those items. Here are some facts to consider, guys. Price inflation. A report by the Toy Association found that scalpers can inflate prices by two to 300% on popular models, making it incredibly difficult for genuine collectors to acquire what they love. A poll conducted by Collectible Insights revealed that 60% of collectors feel discouraged by scalping practices, leading to decreased interest in the hobby. And this is where we come in, guys. We are really just taking back what we just love as a diecast community, and we are seeing it all the time. I think I've stumbled across maybe five or six channels going through these motions of quitting collecting. They're not hunting anymore. They have completely given up on the hobby, and that is what scalpers do. Here's another fact. Market distortion. A survey from Hobby Collector Magazine showed that nearly 40% of new collectors cite high prices due to scalping as a primary reason for not participating. Now, when it comes down to it, they are making the illusion that this car is rare just because it is a popular one. Speaking on JDM, this is a very popular section within the diecast community of R34 Skylines, pretty much anything Nissan, you got Hondas, a lot of Fast and the Furious cars just do not stay on the pegs. And what that does to the new collector is makes them think that that is a new and just very rare item. So when they jump on eBay or whatnot, that scalper or reseller will title that specific post as very hard to find, ultra rare, whatever the car is. Don't always fall into those traps, guys. When you see very hard, very rare, extremely hard to find, and it is a new model for the current year that you're in, just be patient. You will eventually stumble across it in the stores. First thing is first, guys, always buy at store value before you go on whatnot. Now, there's nothing against those selling platforms. There are some good sites, good sellers on there, but of course, there are those 1%, maybe a little bit higher nowadays, that kind of ruin that whole perspective of collecting diecast. So with that, how can you start your Hot Wheels collection without falling victim to scalping? Here are some great tips. First off, set a budget. Determine how much you're willing to spend monthly, and this will help you avoid overspending on these so-called rare items. Number two, research before you buy. Familiarize yourself with retail prices. 
Websites like Hot Wheels official sites, the collector forums provide valuable insights into what models would cost, but definitely pay attention to what they are selling for in store. And we're talking box stores, guys. Walmart, Target, Walgreens, wherever you are buying your Hot Wheels, make sure it is reputable. But if it is a secondhand, let's say a trader's market, you're gonna get some good deals, but then there are some that are gonna inflate the prices just to cover their fees for even renting a booth or a table there. Number three, join collector groups. Engage with local and online Hot Wheels communities. They often share tips on where to find these models at retail prices and may offer trades. Number four, attend local events, swap meets, toy shows, collector conventions are great places to find models at a fair price and meet fellow enthusiasts while you're out there. Number five, it really should be number one, but it is the most important guys and it is to be patient. Don't rush into buying every model you see. You're gonna start filling up totes. You're gonna start running out of room. Just take your time to find the ones you truly want and watch out for the good deals and the ones that are coming out that you just really want to acquire for your own personal collection. So we've talked about the scalpers, the collectors, the hoarders, and what this is doing to the hobby, but how about selling platforms, how it helps, and how it's even hurting the hobby. So online selling platforms like eBay, Macari, play a double-edged role in the diecast hobby. On the positive side, they allow collectors to buy, sell, and trade cars across the world. And if you missed a release in your area, you often can find it online, sometimes at a reasonable price. But here is where it gets tricky. Scalpers use these platforms to create an artificial market, inflating the value of cars through, like we mentioned earlier, the artificial shortages. Now, what not can help and hurt the diecast collecting hobby just like any other selling platform we mentioned just a few minutes ago. So Whatnot has actually become a rising star in the online marketplace offering live auction platforms where buyers and sellers can just interact in real time. While it has gained popularity, especially among collectors, it is important to examine how it can both benefit and potentially hurt the diecast hobby. Now the pros to Whatnot. Real-time interaction and community building, one of the biggest benefits of Whatnot is it is real-time auction formatted. Buyers and sellers interact live during auctions, which creates a sense of community. This also allows the collector to discuss the products, ask questions, and even build relationships with the other collectors. It feels more personal compared to platforms like eBay, where it is just transaction and faceless. For collectors, this social aspect can make the hobby more engaging and fun. Fair bidding process, unlike buy it now listings, whatnot auction formats allow the community to determine the final price. If enough people are interested in the car, it'll fetch a higher price and they win a lot of giveaways, but it also creates a fairer environment compared to scalpers setting inflated prices on other platforms. And it gives you the access to rare and exclusive items. Whatnot is becoming a go-to place for finding rare and hard to get die casts. Some sellers specializing in offering older releases, special editions, exclusives, even hard to find treasure hunts or supers and including chases. I mean, even the premium chases, they are on Whatnot. Now, of course, there's always gonna be pros, but what are the cons? Scalpers can still thrive while Whatnot provides a live bidding system. It is not immune to them. Some sellers may hoard desirable casts only to auction them off in inflated prices. The thrill of live auctions can sometimes lead to bidding wars, driving up prices far beyond the car's retail value, and this can mirror the behavior we see on eBay, where artificial shortages pushes prices beyond what's reasonable, especially for newer releases. FOMO, we hear that thrown around, and it is true, guys. The fear of missing out and impulse buying, Whatnot's live auction format can fuel a fear of missing out mentality. Collectors may feel pressured to even bid higher and make impulsive decisions just to secure a car before someone else does. This can lead to overspending and make the hobby more expensive than it needs to be, particularly for new collectors who might not yet have a good sense of the car's real value. I mean, think about it. If you're seeing cars consistently go for 50, 80, $100 as a new collector, you're gonna think that is the true value of that car, but it might just be that seller and the platform and community he has built. If Whatnot becomes a haven for high-end auctions only, 
it can inadvertently contribute to the exclusionary aspects of the hobby where only those with big budgets can fully enjoy it. We see those in big auction guys like cars, um, collectible sports cards. I mean, there are some real high stakes, high end bidders in those. We do not want our die casts that are only a few bucks to end up in that category. So with that guys, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, let me know down in the comments which part of it you enjoyed, which one gave you a little bit better insight. And if you're new to collecting, let me know if this helps guide you in the right direction. So we just want you to all have fun. Like we always say guys, it is not about the value of the cars. It is solely collecting what you like, what the passion behind it is. Maybe it was your first car and you just wanna collect every version, every release of it. You can do that. There's no right or wrong way to collect, but there is a right and wrong way to sell your stuff if you're doing that. So hopefully you guys stuck around this long and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you can stay tuned for all of our future episodes. And as always guys, until next time, this is the Mustang Hunter. Peace.